Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I am Dr. Rashid Mahmood, and uh, today we are going to discuss the uh, EEG in pediatrics uh, in a simplified way for the postgraduate uh, residents to uh, identify and uh, to understand the basics of EEG as well as uh, to pick the EEG in the uh, exam uh, settings that how they can uh, diagnose EEG easily. So what is EEG? It is actually the uh, electrical activity of the brain that is being recorded uh, on the graph that is called electroencephalogram and process is called as electroencephalography. You, as, uh, you can see this uh, in the picture that uh, waves are shown on the graph and multiple vertical bars are seen. These vertical bars are actually the time interval and the, uh, the time between the two uh, vertical bar is one second. So the number of waves in these uh, one seconds are called hertz. Usually we uh, see in description that three hertz and spike and wave pattern it means that the three spikes and waves are seen in one second between these two bars and this is normal EEG showing a smooth uh, activity in the, all the uh, areas of the brain. So uh, in EEG the important two things are spikes and waves. Uh, I have uh, shown you in the picture uh, the spike and the difference between spike and wave in simplified ways that uh, spikes are of uh, shorter duration and uh, the waves are of longer duration. Uh, in technical terms, in definition, spikes are less than 70 milliseconds and uh, the waves are uh, the more than 70 milliseconds. Uh, this can be seen in the uh, picture. Now, uh, the spike and the waves can be seen separately in combined way or multiple spikes and the single wave can be seen. As seen from above to downward, a sharp wave is seen, then a spike is seen and, and below you can see a, a spike then followed by a wave, spike followed by a wave. On the fourth number, you can see poly spikes that only multiple spikes are seen. And on the fifth, uh, you can see multiple spikes followed by a wave. So these are different pattern that can be seen. Uh, ECGs, uh, EEG is recorded uh, using the electrodes uh, that we place on the uh, scalp. Uh, these are pictures uh, shown uh, here. So uh, now uh, how EEG electrodes are placed on scalp and uh, how we name them and how we read them. So EEG electrodes are placed uh, universally by a 1020 rule system. That is that uh, the, we take the distance from the nasion that is the depression of uh, nasal area to the inion that is the prominent uh, part of occiput. And uh, from this distance we take 10 to 20 percent of the distance and we uh, place the electrodes uh, of, of between by gap of that uh, distance evenly throughout on the scalp so uh, we name the electrodes in, in two waves one is the alphabet and then numerical uh, numbers the numerical numbers can be one two three four five etc so uh, these numerical numbers uh, can be uh, two of two types there can be even or odd even number uh, usually uh, show the right side while odd number show the left side as shown in the picture there are other alphabet are used like uh, F, uh, C, P and O. These shows the lobes. F for frontal lobe, P for parietal lobe, C for central and uh, O for occipital. Although there is no central lobe but these are the areas where EEG will pick the activity from different lobes together. Another part uh, seen Z also seen in the picture. That is uh, Z stand for zero. That is on the central area where sagittal, uh, sagittal plane uh, Z is also shown. So, a uh, common indication of EEG uh, when we do EEG in the pediatrics. Uh, most uh, uh, often it is done in case of unprovoked seizures where uh, we get a child with unprovoked seizures and we do EEG uh, for diagnosis of uh, epilepsy. Although diagnosis of epilepsy is clinical but uh, EEG can help uh, to identify it. Similarly, in case of uh, differentiation from uh, epilepsy to other non-epileptic uh, similar condition like syncope like breath holding spell we can also do EEG. EEG can also tell us about the uh, type of uh, epilepsy it can be focal or generalized as you know very well that medications are different for the focal uh, epilepsy as uh, compared to generalized epilepsy. Similarly EEG can also be used for the uh, uh, diagnosis of epileptic seizures so their management and prognosis is totally different so EEG will help us in, in that cases. EEG also is done in case of uh, status epilepticus in patients who are being uh, uh, 
uh, on the ventilator and uh, been uh, given uh, some muscle uh, paralyzing agents so in that condition only EEG will tell us that patient is uh, actually in seizures or out of seizures EEG is <clears throat> also done for the uh, uh, declaring brain death and uh, EEG is also important for follow-up of uh, epilepsy and also before uh, withdrawing the uh, treatment usually we give anti-epileptics for two to three years uh, and we check uh, with good compliance if there are no seizures uh, in that, that time period then after performing EEG if there is uh, we can uh, withdraw the treatment and slowly taper off now how to correctly pick EEG in exam through given scenario most of the time uh, before going to EEG actually you can diagnose uh, by just clicking on the scenario I will share with you if a child uh, of uh, two, to ten, uh, 2 to 10 months comes uh, in scenario uh, with a history of developmental uh, regression along with the history of jerking movement in the form of uh, uh, limbs and head uh, bending together so the only scenario that uh, comes in your mind is uh, infantile spasm uh, with a vest syndrome similarly if uh, a child of uh, 3 to 7 years uh, of age uh, uh, comes in scenario with a uh, history that child go, uh, wakes up at night with a twitching of one side of face and drooling um, although child is conscious and otherwise developmentally normal then uh, the scenario uh, shows a case of rolandic epilepsy similarly if a child of 12 to 15 years comes in the scenario with a history of uh, generalized seizure as well as dropping of things in the morning then juvenile micronic epilepsy come in the scenario similarly a case of uh, if a child comes that previously had measles and now having developmental delay and jerky movements of the limbs then scenario of the uh, SSV is comes uh, in the your mind Similarly, if a child is having hepatic in calf, uremic in calf, or uh, so EEG is shown, so most of that, that time the EEG will be uh, in cephalopathic pattern. A second hint uh, in uh, diagnosing uh, the scenario via just uh, uh, reading scenario is that how EEG is being performed. Suppose if EEG is performed uh, and a uh, patient was given a uh, uh, hyperventilation and seizures occurred, then uh, these are uh, the absence seizure. Similarly, if EEG is performed and uh, by photic stimulation or sleep deprivation, seizures have been occurred, then and this is case of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. So, in these, uh, by using these things, we can actually diagnose uh, the scenario before uh, going to EEG. Now, I will discuss with you uh, some common pediatric exam-related EEGs. First is the SSP, that is a subacute sclerosing uh, panencephalitis. Usually occurs uh, post measles. It is immune mediated phenomena. So in this case, uh, the typical EEG description is periodic burst expression pattern. So three words are used: periodic burst and expression. Periodic means that there is a periodicity in the EEG that uh, after a specific period of time, the same things are being repeatedly. You can uh, see in the EEG that uh, periodicity is seen. Now there is a burst and expression. Burst means that there are high voltage uh, waves are seen and then there is expression of wave. So you can see that periodicity or burst and expression of wave is seen in this EEG. Again uh, another EEG also showing uh, the same periodic uh, burst expression pattern. This EEG is mild blur but it is also showing the periodic burst expression pattern. That is typical for the absence seizures. Now is the hypsarrhythmia that is uh, seen in infantile uh, spasm. Hypsarrhythmia is uh, a very unique type of EEG uh, where there is a chaotic background along with the high voltage waves. Chaotic background along with high voltage waves. Again, next EEG is showing the same, very clear here that there is no typical pattern is seen and there is a chaotic, chaotic background and high voltage waves. Again, uh, chaotic background, high voltage waves same is shown is uh, shown here now then there is absence scissors uh, in absence scissors typical eeg is the three hertz spike and wave uh, complexes mean in one second you will get three spikes and three waves so e you get first spike then wave then spike and then wave and then spike and then wave and then this pattern is repeated again and again this is typically sh uh, shown here same again uh, scissor, uh, epilepsy absence scissors with 3 hertz spike and wave pattern 
again three hertz spike and wave uh, pattern with epsilon caesar is seen uh, this eeg also showing three hertz spike and wave pattern of epsilon caesar this eeg is showing encephalopathic pattern usually occurs in hepatic in calf uremic in calf or severe encephalitis uh, there's generalized slow wave are seen throughout the uh, brain uh, activity so generalized slow slow waves are seen that is uh, encephalopathic pattern now uh, the benign childhood epilepsy with central temporal spikes that is uh, called as benign rolandic epilepsy you will see spikes uh, in the uh, central and temporal areas that can be seen in this eeg again this eeg is showing a uh, central and temporal area spike activity so you have described that uh, spikes are seen in the central and temporal area that is rolandic epilepsy again this eeg is showing uh, spikes in the central and temporal area of the benign rolandic epilepsy this graphic representation of a jme that is juvenile myoclonic epilepsy so in this we will uh, get poly spike four to five uh, poly spike hertz and wave activity so in a uh, case of epsilon caesar we get three hertz spike and wave we get one spike and then wave one spike and wave and one spike and wave pattern but here we will get multiple spikes followed by a single wave then multiple spikes followed by a single wave so four to five times this repeats in one second period that is juvenile myoclonic epilepsy uh, this is again showing a uh, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy with uh, multiple spikes and wave pattern again a uh, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy with multiple spikes and the wave pattern is shown here uh, also a scenario of a uh, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy multiple spikes uh, with a wave pattern uh, this is again showing a uh, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, uh, epilepsy with uh, multiple spikes and then followed by a single wave. Uh, this pattern is repeated and uh, seen, uh, is shown here in uh, uh, the period of graphic representation. So uh, I tried to uh, cover the common EEGs that uh, commonly been asked in exam and how to describe them and how to pick the scenario of the EEG. And I have also uh, discussed the basics of EEG that you should know uh, in uh, before going to exam. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. Do share with your friends. Okay, love this.